What's going on guys? It's Sensei Adam and today we're going to be going over an extremely, extremely overpowered strategy on the new Mushroom Cave map. Since they added a bunch more walls, all these characters are extremely good on that map. And the strategy is Jesse, Mortis, and a Spike. But don't worry, if you don't have a Spike, you can just switch it out for Anita. Because they do almost the same job, they're a medium range damage dealer. So, like, and you're going to use them for the same purpose. And you're going to use them for the same purpose, which is to be aggro. So you can switch to Anita if you don't have a spike on your team. But how I'm going to do it is usually when I do a strategy video like this, when I'm using some gameplay that I did before, I'm probably not going to have a face cam because I want to focus more on the actual gameplay so you guys can learn and get better. So let's just get started on the strategy. Alright guys, so like I said before, you need a Jesse, Mortis, or a Spike slash Nita. But I would have to say, the most important character that you need to have and the experience is probably Mortis. His skill cap is pretty high, but if you know how to use him, he's so good and so overpowered, especially on this map. And this strategy is kind of unorthodox because you don't have a specific aggro, gem carrier, and support. Basically, everybody carries the gems at some point. Everybody can also be an aggro character, especially Mortis and Spike. But Jessie can also do it when she has her turret. She can just stay next to her turret, keep shooting at it, and it does so much damage. It's insane. And it's also so funny and hilarious how they just keep shooting at the turret, and I just keep healing it up while the bounce shots just keep shooting at them. Look, it's so funny. But the only downside is you do need a max Jessie for the bounce shots to actually work. If you don't have a max Jessie, you won't be able to shoot the turret. But what I'm going to do is probably just go over every single character and where they want to be in the map because everybody has their roles and the positions that they want to stay at throughout like most of the game. So first off, let's get started with the character that I'm playing and that's Jesse. As you guys probably seen throughout this game, I almost always stay on the right side of the map. That's just because I like the position and you can place the turret right there in that position and if they don't have a thrower. And since it's not the thrower meta anymore, you won't see too many throwers on this map. You can just place it right there and keep shooting at it. And usually you're going to have tanks or short to medium range characters trying to take it out. It's hilarious. You can shoot at it and the turret is going to keep shooting at it while they try to take it out. Usually, even if they're a tank and have those high hit points, they're going to spend so much time and the turret is going to have so much time to shoot at it. And your bounce shots are going to hit them a lot. They're gonna die a lot of the times, and even if they do kill your turret with all the damage they just took, you're probably already gonna have another one. You can just save it or just put it right away and start shooting at it. Usually though, I only like to put my turret down only when I have all three of my bullets. That way if they go straight for it and start shooting at it, I can just shoot at the turret and give it 2400 extra HP, that's a lot. But now let's talk about juking because you're probably going to find yourself in a lot of the times a tank is going to go right next to you and just go in a straight line and try to hit you. You don't want to go in a straight line backwards if you're going against a tank. If they're in range, you want to just go next to them and go around in a circle and hope they miss a lot of the shots. And that tip goes for almost every other character if they don't have 700 or 750 speed. Basically, a tank is faster than you, so if they're in range, you can't run away. So you just have to go around them, keep dodging, keep juking, and hope they're going to give up and take enough damage so you can run away. But usually if you have your turret just like this, it's enough to deter them. It's just like you have your own little area and they can't do anything about it. If they go there, they're going to take a lot of damage and just get me another super. But on the flip side, when you do go against a thrower like a barley, dynamite, you want to put the turret near your base, like in that bush right to my bottom left over here. But unlike the other spot, you don't want to put it in the corner. You want to put it near the middle, probably where the spike is right there. Yeah, right there. That way, the throwers can't just stay behind their bush and destroy your turret. It's just a lot more efficient. But other than that, that's mostly it for Jesse. You just want to stay on the right side, keep healing your turret, and keep shooting towards the middle. And hopefully you'll get a lot of bounce shots and kill them. But now let's move on to probably the most important brawler in this strategy. And that is Mortis. 
like I said in my tier list video, I think he's the second best character in the game currently, only behind Daryl. But he does have a high skill cap, so you do need to be very experienced and know what you're doing to make him very effective. But let's just discuss Mortis in our strategy and how you need to use him with this new playstyle to make it very successful. Basically, Mortis needs to be both a hybrid gem carrier and aggro. I know it sounds crazy, but it just works. He stays more towards the middle and he floats around most of the map. Since they added those two walls in the middle, it's a lot easier for a Mortis to just hide behind them and wait for the perfect moment to inflict all three dashes of damage. And that's the important part, you don't want him to just stay behind collecting gems and make it a 2v3, you want him to stay in the action. When he sees like a bull at half HP, he goes for him, does as much damage as possible. Just like he's doing right here to this primo and helping me out with the bull. But the most important factor, the thing that you need to look out for the most, is Mortis's super. It's his tool, his key weapon to keep him alive in the fight, and that's the thing you need to master. I believe it takes 6 or 5 hits before Mortis charges up his super. But this is what you have to keep in mind when you use his super. You want to try and always, always hit 2 or more people with his super. And when you're attacking, you want to consciously remember that, you can't forget it. Remember, try and hit 2 or more people. So when you angle your super, like say you're going for a bull, and then you see that there's a primo like on the other side of the map. You want to go ahead and aim your super in the direction of the primo so it hits both people. And this is why it's so critical that you do that. When you hit two or more people, your next super will charge in three hits. That's right, three hits. So when you do your next attack, you can just hit three hits on somebody and use your super again on two people. And it's again just three dashes away. That way you can do so much damage in so little time and still survive. And that's why here, you're usually going to see our Mortis going aggro. Because even though he's carrying a lot of gems, he knows that he's going to get 3 hits off, get that super, and get the healing off on 2 people. And when you combine that with Mortis' star power, which he gets 1000 HP for everybody he kills, that just makes him an overpowered killing machine. So whenever you see somebody at low HP, he can just kill him, get his super, and get HP back from his super and his tombstone, which is just crazy. My one tip though is when you are using Mortis, you don't dash in a straight line or like in a predictable way towards your enemies. That way, they waste their attacks on the air and then you're gonna be safer and have more time to kill them. But last and not least, let's go ahead and discuss Spike or Nita. Usually, they stay on the left side of the map. That's where you're seeing our spike here go most of the time. He stays behind the other wall because it's a little bit further away from our base and he can be a little bit more aggro. But the reason why spike is so good is he's usually known as a tank killer. And since it's a tank meta, you're usually going to see a lot of teams of double tanks. They're just so good, but Spike is such a good counter against them. Basically, since he has that wall to hide behind, if the tank is hiding behind the wall, he can just throw it right over the wall and get them dead center. That way, everybody can just unload on them and they have nowhere to run. They're going to be trapped there for about 5 seconds and usually he's going to be dead and Spike's probably going to charge up another super. He's just that good. But like I said before, if you don't have Spike, you can just swap him out for Anita. Nita though, you have to be a little bit more careful because she doesn't do that much damage at close range. So what you want to do when you have a Nita instead of a Spike, is probably try and hit them with the edge of your range. And when you do get a bear, don't, I repeat, do not throw your bear right at them. That's the worst possible thing you can do. That's because usually they're just going to obliterate that bear in just one second if you're going against close range tanks. So instead, what you want to do is either throw the bear backwards, probably towards your mortis so he has something to hide behind, or a lot of the things you see people do is just throw the bear right where you are right now. That way, not only will you get your bear instantly, it will also protect you from incoming damage from all the tanks or everybody else. That way, your bear is going to serve a lot more value than just throwing it right at the enemy and just making them waste one or two ammo to kill it instantly. But now I'm just going to go over a few of the matchups that you're probably going to go against on this map. Like I said before, you're probably going to go a lot against double tanks. It's just the meta right now. And this strategy is so good against double tanks. You just need to get them low enough 
and the Modus can usually assassinate them so fast. Another thing you can usually see is going against a thrower because they think there's a lot of walls in this map so they might be good. And what you want to do is just put your turret in the back like where the spike and Modus are at right now. So they actually have to go to the middle of the map in order to destroy it. And the last matchup I would look out for is going against a Nita or a Jesse. If they have a turret or a bear, you have to destroy it as fast as possible. It just hinders your Modus and it's really hard for him to play when there's like a turret in the middle just chipping him down or a bear chasing him. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this strategy guide. It's really effective. I just played it as Mortis and he's just so good. He's so strong, especially on this map. But don't forget also, I'm going to have a live stream tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Time where I'm going to play a lot with viewers. But anyways, I hope everybody enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.